A definition to mention here is a compound path. A simple path is any path that you can follow from one point to follow along all the segments and reach an ending point. In some cases, the ending point may be the start point in the case of a closed path, or it can be another point in the case of an open. This is one type of compound path where you can't follow from a single point all the way along and reach all of the points in the outer geometry. Under the object menu with path, there is a release compound path, which will break apart the path into the separate pieces. You'll notice in my object tree, I now have two paths where a moment ago, I only had one. I'm going to press control D to deselect everything. And now you'll see that I can move my paths around independently of each other. I'm going to undo a couple times to this point. So we can go through the remainder of the combined operations. Exclude overlap is the inverse of the intersect. When I choose that, the portions of both paths that intersect are removed and a single path is created that connects everything. This path also, if you look at it, is a compound path. So I can use the release compound command again to separate them. I'm going to hit control Z a couple times to undo back to my previous state so we can carry on. The last combine operation is divide. When you divide, the paths are separated into separate segments based on which portions were intersecting. So we have one segment that was the intersection as well as separate segments for the parts that were unique to each individual path. This is the other type of compound path where as we go along the path, we branch in multiple directions. When I release this compound path and press control D again to deselect everything, as I move the pieces around, you'll see that the geometry has been broken to multiple different paths. The paths that we've been working with right now were all created by the pen tool. You'll notice though, I'm going to get rid of these elements for now. I'm using the drag select to select all of my elements and then press delete to get rid of them. You'll notice, however, that if I add a rectangle to my artboard in the object tree, this is displayed as a rectangle, not as a path. When I use the direct selection tool, none of the adorners that I saw on the path elements are displayed here. In fact, there are no point adorners displayed at all. Without the point adorners, I can't modify the geometry. I certainly can't convert any of those points to Bezier points. This is where we we'll use the menu item under object and path, convert to path. As soon as I select this, now a new path is created with the geometry that matches the rectangle. And now I have the nodes that I can go ahead and move around. At this point, I can go ahead and use all those same tools I showed a moment ago. When you have two rectangles, I'm going to undo a couple times to bring this back to a rectangle. As soon as you use the combine operations, The combine operations will always result in a path. So although I'm taking two rectangles and combining them, I'm going to use unite. The resulting element is a path. Even if I were to use intersect, which would in and of itself result in a rectangle, the resulting element is not a rectangle element per se. It is a path that I can modify. In addition to working with the path geometry that you've seen, Blend supports clipping paths. To go ahead and work with the clipping path, I need to first add an image to my project. I'm going to open my projects palette, go into my project and add an existing item. I'm going to go to my desktop and in the lesson seven folder, add my modern art image. I'm going to add this to my scene. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a clipping path around this. I'm going to take my rectangle path again. I'm going to use the direct selection tool to give myself a little more of an unusual geometry. I'm going to move this onto my image and with it selected, I'm going to use the control key to also select my image. 
In this case, remember that the primary selected element is the one that will define the clipping path. I'm going to go to Object, Path, and make a clipping path. Now my image has been cut down to only match the portions that went with the unusual path that I had before. Although this looks similar to the intersection operation that we saw before, a clipping path can actually be applied to any element. This includes buttons, this includes controls, it can even include images, as it did in this case, without actually converting the result into a different form. Here the control is still an image and maintains all the image properties, where the intersection combine operation results in a path where I lose all the functionality that I would need. Again, expression design is the better tool for vector element modification, but these tools here in Blend should give you the ability to make the changes that you'll need to do without always having to go back and forth between the two applications.